All right, this is Matt Rosick, and this will be work in progress number two on the custom one quarter scale Wolverine sculpted by Eric Sosa. I finally realized that's who made this kit. So um, I finally got the custom heads to fit decently. Um, I'll show that to you in a second, but I want to at this time give you kind of an overall view of the kit. So now this this is a, an addition size of 50, uh, 50? no 20, 20. So very small edi addition size. Um, and I'm assuming that includes the pre-paints and the kits. So a uh, very rare piece if you can find one. Another crazy expensive. Um, I think the kits run for like $1,500 or something crazy like that. So uh, this is number uh, 16. Um, here's the bottom vinyl for the base. Unfortunately, got a little wrinkled in shipping and sometimes that happens to them. But this is a really, really excellent sculpt. Um, I mean, everyone knows who Eric Sosa is. And, and the quarter scale statue, uh, this is in the statue community. Um, it's a really, really nice piece. Um, it's gonna look good once it's done. So here he is just kind of sitting together. I'm gonna go over some of those areas that still need a little additional work before I'm happy to start painting it. But, um, so this is, these are the, the heads that come with the kit. And I really like those. Um, I'll show you a comparison between these and the uh, custom heads. And then uh, here's the other one, the unmasked head. I love that. I really like the hair on this one. I like how I know, it looks really good. And then um, I can't put the arms on yet because that's going to be part of this work in progress. They're not magnetized or pinned, but we're going to, um, Chris wants me to, when this is all said and done, have the arms, basically the arms, legs, and torso all one piece. So in the end, this will all get glued together. And the only thing that will have magnets are the hands. Now, what's interesting is that they put magnets in the gloves, but they didn't put magnets in the arms. So, um, who knows <laughs> why they did that. So, in this work in progress, we're going to um, put the magnets in. And I'm going to show you what the work I did on the, the custom heads. So, let me show you the work I did first on the heads. And then we'll put the magnets in and add pins to everything else so this guy can stand up on his own. So, the first work in progress, I was showing you how... Um, these custom heads that Chris bought did not fit this very good at all. Now, um, he has, I think Chris said he had a pre-painted version of this too and the heads fit perfectly. So I don't know what happened between the pre-paint and, and the kit, but when I first put this head on, it wouldn't go down all the way and it wobbled a lot. So basically, as I showed you before, as I filled in this cavity with body filler and then I slathered this whole neck with petroleum jelly or Vaseline and I stuck it down there and after that dried, I pulled it off and sanded it all down. So the inside is not real pretty, but now it fits really good. There's no wobble. There's really no gap at the neck. That's always, you're always gonna have a, a seam. Whenever you have a, a switch out head or anything like that, there's always gonna be a seam. There's nothing you can do about it, but it fits a lot better now. Um, and he doesn't wobble and it goes down all the way. And then on the masthead, um, and this is just the way the sculpt is, and I was like, man, this still doesn't look right. But then I had Chris send me some pictures, close-ups of the masthead on. And what's different between this head and the custom head is really um, a lot in the cowl um, and the mask. On the, on this, on the factory head, um, the way this is sculpted, the, the, like the chin or the jowl part of the cowl comes out more, and it's flared out a little more. So the head on this one is like a little fatter in the jowl area um, and also you can see that these kind of wings are, are bigger um, I think this head overall is a little skinnier but it's also a little taller so the proportions are a little different so you can see that the head's a little skinnier um, it's a little bit taller it's a little more rounded this has been squared off a little bit bit in the back here so um, I think they're both cool heads um, yeah this one just was bare to get to fit and it took me about three tries before I finally got it to work. So after I got, I showed you how I installed the magnet I had to fill the head with Bondo cause it was, it was hollow, put the magnet in and I put it on and it was still not fitting to my satisfactory. So I did another round of body filler and it, that just wasn't working. So what I did last night before, um, I had to go do some family stuff. I basically took a bead of, um, Abe's two part epoxy and I ran a bead of it in the back here and then I put the head on. The problem was what the, was that the head wasn't wanting, like the chin wasn't want, was wasn't wanting to go down all the way. His, his head was like um, it was tilting back a little bit, which 
gave me a huge gap down here and it just wasn't fitting. So with that bead of Aves, I pushed this on. Again, I put petroleum jelly all around the neck because otherwise you'll never get it off. And I clamped it overnight and I put a clamp basically pushing down on this uh, forehead in the bottom. So it brought that chin down. And now this fits um, almost better than the stock head. I mean, it's, it is a snug fit. And you can tell you put it on there, it's like creates a little bit of a vacuum and the magnet, it's really nice. So you can see here that this gray bead of Aves, there's about an eighth inch of a gap between the custom head and the kit. Um, so something between the kits and the pre-paints isn't the same. I don't know what that would be, to be honest. Should be the exact same sculpt. Don't know, but anyway, got these fitting. It took, that took me quite a while. Um, if I had to put an, a number of hours on it, four or five hours just to get these two heads to fit to my satisfaction. Okay, so those fit really good now. Um, I showed you the, the, the uh, stock heads. Oh, and also, since I was kind of, now the torso is really um, um, messy and dirty for me just putting petroleum jelly all over it. So I wiped it down. And I always do this with every kit. Um, this doesn't have any primer on it from the factory. So, um, and even if it does have primer in the factory, I always give everything a light sanding. So I use a super fine sanding sponge from 3M, and this one's a little bit used. And in doing so, I'm not sure if it's going to show up in camera, but the seam line popped out. So I see the seam line. Um, I didn't see that before I started sanding. So now I'm going to have to go through and sand that seam line down because if I was just to paint it, that would show through eventually through the paint. Um, as you, I don't know if you know, but as paint dries and cures, over time it shrinks. And it continues to shrink for, it could be a month or two months. And then like you come back later, three months later, and the, the seam line pops out because it wasn't taken care of. So... Even though this is a this is a ready to paint kit, it's not. Um, you have to go through and just a lot of things you don't see until you start sanding. So again, I'm just gonna give it a real light sanding. I'm not really. It's very smooth, but again, right here, let's see there. So there's a, a little white. I don't know if you can see it. The little white line right there that just filled in was dust. Well, that's the seam line. <laughs> So um, that's why I always do this because until you start sanding, you're not gonna see all the little imperfections. So I'm not gonna show you me sanding the whole thing, but basically this thing will get a very light sanding all the way around this, the sanding sponge. And I'm basically just kind of wiping it down. It does two things. It creates a little bit of tooth and it shows me any little areas that were not caught in prep. So I know everyone says, yeah, you get, I'm gonna send you a kit. It's ready to paint. I never believe that until I start doing a light sanding. If I do a light sanding and nothing pops out, it's ready to paint. If I do a light sanding and I see a seam line, it's not ready to paint. Um, I thought the first Captain America I got was gonna be ready to paint. It wasn't. I found a couple seam line areas that bugged me right here. It's pretty obvious right here. The seam line is um, pretty prevalent there. I may actually have to go in there and fill that a little bit. We'll see. We'll see if it sands it down. If not, I'll have to go in there and put a little putty on that seam line. Sometimes, if, I always say, sometimes the factories overclean it and they create flat spots. Right here. There's a little white line right there. That's where all the dust just collected into the seam line. So I'm not going to show you the, this all the sanding because that's just boring. So that's that. I'm going to have to give this a light sanding. I haven't sand. I haven't hit the uh, anything else with this piece with sandpaper. <laughs> um, I mean, the casting is beautiful. It's a beautiful sculpt. Here you can see where the, the factory went in and cleaned up the seam line. Let's see if they did a good job. If it doesn't collect any white dust, then it's good. And this looks like it's pretty good. It's not collecting any dust in any little areas that were missed. Um, and another thing is, sometimes you just have to run your fingernail over it because a lot of times what you're seeing is just a discoloration of the resin. Um, and a, a fingernail test is really good to tell if the seam line's there. If, you're, if you feel it catching on something, then the seam line is still present. So you gotta make sure you get that out. So again, everything will get a light sanding just to check for the seam lines. Um, I don't anticipate any bubbles. I've never encountered any bubbles on these kits. Um, I'm assuming they're pressure casting everything, which forces all the bubbles out or in, depending on which way they do it. If they vacuum cast it, then it sucks all the bubbles out. If they pressure cast it, it pushes all the bubbles to the center. Um, 
I know some guys do one or the other. I don't know what, if there's a, a better way of casting or a more preferable way, but um, the idea is that basically the pressure will compress all the bubbles and the vacuum will suck all the bubbles out. So like this leg, that's it. That's all the same I'm gonna do. So now it's got, it's dull. It's not shiny anymore. Uh, what's this? I don't know, see I'm putting my finger on there and I feel a little, I don't know what those are. A little half circle, I gotta sand that out. My fingernail's catching it, whatever it is. So, I'll have to sand those out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you um, just installing the magnets, the same process I've done on everything else. So we're gonna take um, one of the arms and one of the hands. And uh, so like this edge right here needs a little bit of cleanup. It's a little janky. So again, just a light sanding. I think that's, um, there's a little bit of flashing. Again, if you don't know what flashing is, it's the, the bit of material that squeezes out between the two molds as they, as they cast something. And it's usually just a very paper thin, less than paper thin bit of material, depending on if the mold's good. So that's it, that's all, that's all that needed. Yeah, it's just a little bit of flashing. Okay, so we're gonna put the magnet in on this arm. And I thought I had to go buy magnets, but I got, I got enough magnets to do here. And I only need two magnets for, to do this whole kit because the rest is gonna be pinned. So as, as usual, I'll get my blue tack. I'm gonna warm it up a little bit so it sticks. If you don't warm it up, it's not gonna stick to anything. And if your resin has a lot of mold release on it, it won't stick. I'm gonna put that here. And then once I get this all magnetized and pinned, I can show it to you together in one piece. And then we're just gonna give this a little, a little squeeze in there. Just like that, now you can see a circle. That's where the other magnet is. So now I know where to put my magnet. This looks like it's, see, if this magnet was perfectly centered, I could just draw an X on there and center it and it'd be good to go, but it's not perfectly centered. So we're gonna do that. And then we get my little punch tool and I'm gonna eyeball the center right there. that oh and there was a little chip in the base that Chris had taped to the base so I just got glue and fix that that that's like a five minute fix so then I got my location of the magnet and we're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday with the head I'm just gonna work our way up to the right to the right size which is gonna be half an inch in the end what I like about this kid they put nice big pins in the feet nice big solid pins everything lines up really nice so Everything fits really well. Uh, I'm gonna start out with a 332nd, just a small one. It helps that I have a battery in the, in the drill. So today's goal on this guy is to get it all pinned and magnetized and light sanded. I may get it in primer, um, we'll see. I'm gonna try to get the Hellboy in primer today too. If, that's, if I do that, that's a, that's a good day. like that and now we're gonna start working our way up slowly but surely I need to get myself some um, I use a lot of half inch magnets for these big things. I'm gonna get some uh, like, uh, not half inch, but like three eighths. That'd be like the perfect size for this kind of stuff. I think that's what the factory used. It looks like three eighths to me. Oh, nope. Hmm, it's a metric because it's not half inch. It's too small for half inch. It's too big for three eighths. Okay, I'm gonna jump up a to three sixteenths. So I don't know why the factory didn't put magnets in these. They put when they put <laughs> they put them in the hands, but they didn't put them in the arms. I'm not going real deep because I don't um, the half inch magnets I have actually have holes in the middle, and I got these because it helps me really like get them centered. So I'll try one, but I think. Um, 
If I need more power, those are pretty thin. I'll just, I usually stack two on top of each other. I'll just stack them and I'll get a little more pull. So we're gonna get this and then we're gonna pin the legs and everything else here. So this may be a little bit of a, a long video, probably an hour or so as usual, maybe two. I try to keep my videos more towards an hour, hour and a half because those two and hour, two hour and three hour ones, I know those are really long for people to watch, but I've gotten a lot of requests to actually show things in real time because, and I like to, when I'm watching people, when I'm, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos still too because I'm still learning, constantly learning how to do things. Um, I like to watch it in real time also because if they make a mistake or something, they can explain how to fix it. And I make a lot of mistakes and I try to explain how I fix them. <laughs> so, um, it's helpful because, um, you know, I don't know. I just, t I tend to make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> the trick is if you can go in there and fix them. I may have to run out and get three eighths. Half inch may be too big. <laughs> nope, let me just, this bit's really dull. It, it has, it's drilled a lot of holes lately. snug fit so I want to make sure I get them in the right way for the first time. Okay, so my polarity. I oh, see the factory magnet just pulled out. They didn't glue them in there very good. I think they put one little dot of, dot of glue in there and that's it. It's not enough. So I'm going to glue this back in real quick and then we'll put my magnet in. And then I like to use a, like a Q-tip to push the magnet down because then I can, any glue that oozes out, I kind of rub it on top of it. And I just kind of do this. I just take that excess glue and kind of rub it, you know, just kind of spread it out. And then I can hit it with some zip kicker. And I should lock it in there. It creates a little surface joint on top of that. And with that zip kicker, it should be dry by now. All right, so now I know my polarity is going to be this side out and i'll go ahead and throw two magnets in there just to be just to make sure i got enough pull i think that's deep enough i'd rather have a little okay Double checking my polarity because man, trust me, I've had to dig I had to dig a magnet out the other day and it's not fun. So for this guy, I'm gonna push it down. And this is where I wish I owned a rubber mallet. I don't own a rubber mallet, but I wish I did. Because I need something that's non-magnetic. But I can use this. plenty of pull. I think one magnet wouldn't have been enough, but it lines up perfectly, sucks it right in. Um, now what I like to do, and this is just me, is I like to finish these off. 
So I'll try to get it countersunk a little bit. Because I want to not only countersink it just to hide it, I think it's a neater finish, but then I like to um, use my super glue and talc trick. And that's what will keep the magnets from ever pulling out. I'm just off camera here trying to get it to go down a little bit more. If my hole's not deep enough, then I won't be able to countersink it. But that's the goal. This, this, this magnet won't come out as it is. It's, it's really tight. Okay, I feel it above the surface just a hair. size. Let me see if I can get it down just a little bit more. I think this is as far down as it's going to go. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do my, I'll do my super glue and talc trick and it may not cover it up 100%. It's just, I mean, I, right now I don't have to because it's not, this is never going to come out because of how tight it is. But I just like to kind of cover it up and kind of make, you know, hide it. It's just something I'd like to do. So I'm going to do. And then again, it just, it's another insurance that this will never, ever come out. So again, this is something I've shown on every other work in progress. I say I, I switched the words talc and um, baking soda. You can either one use either one. This is baking soda. Basically, you're just going to make a paste and use it as a putty. And with that hole in the middle of the magnet, again, it just kind of this, this homemade putty will get down in that hole and it'll ensure that this magnet never comes out. And the more talc or baking soda you add to the glue, the faster it's going to dry. So just be aware of that. But also the easier it's going to sand. So I'm going to put this in there. It's already starting to dry. Just going to fill it in. This looks messy at first, but we're going to sand it down nice and smooth by the time we're done. All right, so there's one. So I'm going to show that now. I'm not going to do the next one on camera. You got the idea for that. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to pin. Um, the heck? Let's add some glue on there. And I'm going to show you how to pin other parts of the kit and then I'll pause and come back and show you everything together. That way this video isn't two hours long. All right, so let's pin. So pinning is basically just adding metal rods to things to help things from pulling apart. These do have nice big keys in them and I probably could get away with just in the end epoxying these together. But again, um, it's always a good idea to pin your pin any resin kit um i know some guys that just use glue and don't, don't pin well i don't recommend that so this pin i have i think these are oh don't drop the drill this is three thirty seconds no it's five thirty seconds i believe i need to check one second Oh, maybe they're 1-8. 
for this kit, I'd like to use the biggest ones I have, which I believe are one eighth, is what I have right now. Yeah, these are one eighth. So, one eighth brass rods. Um, you can use steel, but I like brass because it's got a little bit of give to it, and if your holes aren't exactly lined up, you can usually still make it work. Do I have any one eighth drill bits left? I think I've broken most of them. <laughs> Let's see. I may not have an eighth drill, one eighth drill bit. Uh, I'm have to go downstairs and get one out of my other kits. It's five thirty seconds. All right, I'll be right back. All right, down to my one, my last one eighth drill bit in the house. Let me go buy some more. I tend to break those a lot because I use them and. Sometimes they get they go too far deep in the resin and they get stuck. I did that on the last Hellboy. So a few of them broke off in the kit and they're they're just there. Okay. So let's pin. Um, let's do. I'm going to pin the legs to the feet first. So we're gonna drill a hole in the this part first. Just, you know, just try to center it, it doesn't be perfect. So I went in pretty far, three inches or so. And I'll just give the pin a lot of bite. So that's gonna go there. And then we're gonna do my blue tack trick in the leg or in the foot. Basically again, I'm gonna kind of warm it up. Just put it down in there. In there and just give it a little squeeze and you can see right there that's where that pin goes okay so I'm gonna take my punch tool and we're gonna mark the center like that pull that out and then drill our other hole and hopefully these line up end up doing is um, gluing the pin in here and then this um, where is my, my there they are you can guesstimate how deep that hole is and we'll see if it goes in go so now it's pinned nice and snug and you'll see that when I pull this out that the pin actually bent just just a hair because my holes weren't exactly lined up and that's why I use brass because it's got a little bit of give if I was to use steel my holes, my holes would have to be 100% lined up and a lot of times they're not 100% so basically that's just gonna give another surface of glue to stick to um, here's another uh, uh, example where the seam line wasn't taken out all the way right here so that's the same process for everything else. I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll come back and show you everything together 
because uh, then the next step will basically do the sanding, light sanding, and then primer. So I'll be back when everything's together. Okay, I'm just about done pinning here, but I wanted to show you something because I don't think I've shown this before. Um, when I'm gluing pins in, I'll take my, like my nippers or whatever, and I'll go through and I'll put in a bunch of little teeth in there. And you can see it's all bent and everything, but what this does is it gives the glue something to grip to. Um, I'll sand, I, I'll usually sand these, but on something big like this, I go in here and I just put a bunch of little grooves in here. And um, I've already filled this hole in with uh, thick CA. So I'm gonna throw it in, put it in there, and a lot of it's gonna come out. But now that glue is gonna have something to bite onto. And this pin won't come out now. And then obviously after it gets epoxy to the kit, it's never gonna come out, but it just gives it a good, something solid to bite into. Let's get out of the way. And I just hit a little zip kicker. And you can see how long that pin is. That goes all the way into his um, upper body. It's a tight fit, which is good. That's what we want. Oops, <laughs> I might got stuck to the magnet. So now all I have to do is I just have one more magnet to put it put in, and then uh, he'll be put together. I'll come right back. Okay, so I just got done putting the last magnet in, and you can see it's been puttied and sanded smooth. So we can put this guy together finally. Let's see what he looks like. This is the first time I've had him all together in one piece because he hasn't been pinned. So right now there's a little bit of a gap right at the um, armpit, but that's because um, this pin is so long and it, the, the, the fit is actually so good. Um, but when I epoxy this at the end, I'll actually I'll clamp this together and then I'll close up. Um, but it'll look good. Okay, and then the other, this will go like that. Magnetizes perfectly. Let's back out a little bit. And uh, then we got the claws, metal claws, which are really, really killer. Um, these will have to be glued on in the end. And I have to ask Chris if he wants these polished or not. Um, like if he wants them polished, if he wants any blood coming off of them, or just a kind of a clean look. And it looks like they do have specific spots, like this one doesn't fit. I mean, it fits, but it's obvious that it doesn't really go right there. Um, so I think each claw has a specific spot on the hand. So. Just gotta make sure that those get glued in the right place. And then here we go. Let's check them out. Pretty slick. And so an overall height for this guy from the base to the top of this head is right at uh, 18 and a half inches. And then he is 16 and a half. That seems a little short to me for a quarter scale. Um, I'm not sure how Wolverine is in real life, but it seems a little short to me. I think he would be taller. I mean, I look at a uh, vision over there and I think he's a little bit taller. I can't tell, I'll, I'll, I'll have to measure him later, but I would think that he'd be closer to 18 inches without the base, but that's just me. And then we got that head. And then the custom heads. I, I really like this head. I kind of like this face, but I like this hair. I would like to see this face with this hair, personally. Um, I like the proportions on his face better. This nose is too pointy and too skinny, in my opinion. This is more uh, masculine looking, in my opinion. This may be, not that this is like a pretty boy look, but this is definitely a more masculine look on this head. And I like the cigar coming out. Um, but I like this hair. I like the pretty boy hair with the, <laughs> the, the tougher face. This hair is more, probably more reminiscent of Wolverine just because it kind of got, you know, it's obviously got these two kind of like points that he usually has. So does this guy, but um, this is a little more, I would call this more pretty boy look. This is more of a rough, tough look. And then the, the masked custom head right there. And then uh, we just got the silly putty in there because I'm going to save the painting on the mouth. So I love the painting that the, on the mouth on this. It's really, really good. So there you go. So it's all pinned. Um, and magnetize. The next step will be to give it a light sanding and then a bath and then primer. 
Um, I probably won't show those steps because those are like, I show that in all my other builds. And not, no real secret to there. You wash it with soap and water really well. Uh, like a Dawn, a degreasing agent after you sand it. And then uh, lay down a, a, a primer. And then um, I don't anticipate anything like popping out from the priming layer. Uh, primer will show you right away if there's any areas that need work. If anything, the, the custom heads may need a little more, uh, not work, but cleaning up where I've done all the putty work. Um, that's the only thing I could imagine that would need a little more attention as far as sanding or, or anything. But um, the first thing that will get painted on this guy will be the skin tones. I have to do that first before I do anything else. And then um, from there we'll go through and paint the suit and everything. And then Chris is going to be very specific references and instructions on what colors he wants um, so that's good uh, he knows exactly what he wants which, which helps me um, because there isn't like any indecision in the process of doing this it's it's much harder to go back and redo something um, than to get just get it right the first time obviously like to do it the first time could take me let's say 30 minutes well then if something like if your mind changes i have to go back and redo it that could take me twice or three times as long to redo it than just, you know, make sure you know what you want and we're getting it right the first time. So, um, yeah, it's always easier to know what you want, give really clear instructions to your painter, builder, or whatever, whoever it is. And um, it just helps them later, you know, work more efficiently and stuff. So there you go. This is a work in progress too. It's just a short one. It's only 35 minutes. Wow, I'm proud of myself. So yeah, so I'll go get think, go get this light sanding today. Uh, work on some of these seam lines that are popped out that I see that uh, need a little more attention. Um, I sanded a little bit more on the other one. I don't think I need to do any putty work. I just think it needs a light sanding, and then I'll fix this little chip, which is basically I think to glue it in and add a touch of putty. It's down here at the bottom, and then that's done. But man, it's a really cool piece. I mean, I would I would love to have this one. I don't I wouldn't pay fifteen hundred dollars for it, but. He's a cool piece. I love, um, I really do like the sculpt. These claws won't stay in because they're heavy, but oh, they'll stay in a little bit. So yeah, cool piece. Really like it. Like a stance, like the muscles. Um, there's things I like about the faces and things I don't like about the faces. I think a combination of these two would be really kick ass. Um, I think that'll look good. I think I like on the mass version, I like, I do like the open mouth. Um, and I like the proportions more. It's more, like I said, it's a little skinnier and a little taller. It looks a little more um, streamlined, I guess would be a, a good term, um, as opposed to this one. And I like that these are smaller on the side. I think these are a little too big to, for, my, for my opinion. But again, I'm not a comic guy. I say this all the time. I'd like, if I see something I like, I'll build it or I'll try to get it, you know, and um, it doesn't matter who sculpted it or what the character is. I don't care if it's something that I think is cool and I'll have fun doing, then I try to get it and, and paint it or find someone that has one to paint. <laughs> so again, I don't have a, a favorite, like oh, I only do C DC or I only do Marvel or, you know, that kind of thing. That's, I like it. I like, kind of like it at all. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. So that's the end of work in progress number two. Uh, so I guess work in progress number three will be laying down skin toes and I'll, I'll don't know when I'll get to that. Um, Sometime this week for sure. Um, now I am noticing, now that I have this all pinned together, he's not wanting to s sit down in the pegs all the way. I need to see if he does that. Let's check that out real quick since I'm here. Um, I'm going to take him off the base. Because right now it looks like he's up on his toes a little bit. I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be. Because this is all pinned and he's all lined up. Yeah, I guess that's how it's supposed to be, because when I put this in, it's on its heel a little bit. It's on its toe a little bit, so um, as long as that's how they're supposed to go in there. Yeah, exactly how it is. So he's up on his toes a little bit, kind of leaning. Um, his posture, like he's got a little, his, you know, you can tell the way his posture is that um, his pelvis is kicked back a little bit and his shoulders are back, so and he's putting a little bit of weight. He's kind of going, going on his toes. So, there we go. All right, now it's the end of work in progress number two. We'll catch you guys next time.